month we've been reading The Handmaid's Tale and then The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. We've done a double whammy because it's been quite a while since we've done book clubs, so we're doing a bit of a bit of a relaunch and a bit of a rebrand and we thought we'd double up on the books. So what's it all about? It's about a dystopian society, um, basically where women, m many, many women have lost the ability to be able to reproduce and therefore they are sort of um, taking control of them. But men become in charge again, like it's been from all through history, but this time it's a bit more obvious and women are a bit more sort of um, repressed and controlled by men. So The Handmaid's Tale is written entirely from the perspective of Offred, who's a handmaid, who's basically a baby-making machine for rich people um, in this new world. Um, the Testament is written from the perspective of three or four different people yeah. um, leading towards the end of the, end of the Gilead regime. So I've always been aware of The Handmaid's Tale. Um, I never read it at school, but a lot of my friends did. So I I've always been aware that it's out there, but I've never read it as a book. Um, when the TV series came out, I think I tried to watch it with my partner, um, watched one episode, didn't watch it again. And then a couple of years later, we binge watched the whole thing, absolutely loved it. Um, and then we got round to doing book club and said, okay, let's read, let's read The Handmaid's Tale because uh, it's such an iconic book and I was absolutely blown away by it. I wish that I could have read it before having seen the TV series because I think it was just so perfect as, a, as, as an entity. Um, one thing that I really love about it, about this dystopian future, which isn't really too far in the future, but one thing I really loved about it was the fact that it, it's so existential in the presentation of it, that there's no you don't know why Gilead exists. You don't know what happened beforehand. You know, we you know we know because we there have to be handmaids that um, women are no longer productive. Um, there's a lot of women that, that aren't able to reproduce, but there's kind of no explanation as to why. There's kind of an an indication that there's been some kind of nuclear disaster, um, but it's all just presented as is with no explanation, um, and I've, I've really really enjoyed that. Aunt Lydia is one of the main characters of the Testaments and I thought it was really interesting to see her story, to read her story because it goes right back to when yeah, course, Gilead yeah. was being established and you know all the women were being mm -hmm. rounded up and divided into groups and stuff because throughout the first book you just see her as this like a law enforcer, really really harsh, um, violent almost yeah. um, kind of prison guard in a way, um, but in the testaments you see how how she became that. I think Margaret Atwood writes about very niche topics, so dystopian future worlds where women are turned into handmaids or like retellings of Shakespeare plays. It's I find some of her work a bit too highbrow for me. I think the second book was the icing on the cake to a perfect book. Yeah, like I can't wait to see Elizabeth Moss play it all out. I can't. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't feel like they followed each. Like I know they did follow each other, but the this one, the Testaments was was the whole thing as well, wasn't it? It was all of everything that was happening here yeah. is talked about here. Yeah, which was, I liked. That it gave more, gave more yeah. information to that everything that was going on in that. Yeah, I thought it was really clever. Yeah. Yeah. My favourite characters, and it's not a, a character specifically, but um, I really like all the Marthas, um, like the network of Marthas, um, the people that really get things done um, within the structure of Gilead, but they're, they're the kind of the most quiet and unassuming, unassuming types, like the dark horses that, that you have to watch out for, you know, the, the, the people that do all the cooking and feed the families and, and whatnot, but really they're the, the resistance that is, uh, that is ultimately going to take down Gilead. I really liked um, Aunt Lydia in the second book. I really liked her and I thought it was really perfect the way from this point of view of The Handmaid we'd seen this nasty horrible character who was um, evil and malicious and violent and everything else but then when you read it from her perspective that's not the case at all and she was just 
trying to figure out the best way to go about this whole vile, horrible situation she found herself in, just like everybody else had done. And so I loved seeing the development of her character in The Testaments because I think that gave just an enlightened um, perspective of her character. My favourite character was Janine um, because she was down on her luck. She was always trying... She just really wanted to be loved and she really wanted to be everybody's friend but she was really annoying and no one really liked her. Um, and I just felt sorry for her and then she lost an eye and I just felt sad for her. Uh, but I thought it was a very sweet portrayal of the character and I liked her. Loved it. I'm going to give uh, The Handmaid's Tale 5 because um, even though I've seen the TV series and it is very much the same story being told in the book, um, I did find that there were aspects to it that made me feel like I was learning more that I didn't know. So the ending of The Handmaid's Tale is very different to the ending of the first series of the TV show um, for reasons that are apparent once you've read it. And so it's like when you, when you have a film that's your favorite film and then you find out some facts that you didn't know about it or you find some like bloopers on YouTube and it just gives that extra um, coating of um, enjoyment because it's something you didn't know before and didn't have. So I loved that. The second book was brilliant. Um, I did find it a bit long and a bit confusing. As I've said, I can't remember if it was three or four people's um, accounts that we're hearing because the names would change because they were known by different names to different people. And it kind of, I'm not very good mentally with books that jump to and fro between times or different characters. So if there's more than a few people um, I find it hard to get my head around, but I think that's the only reason that I'm giving that one for. For the original Handmaid's Tale book, I give it five out of five. Um, I, as I've said many times already on this Vox Pop, I just think it was perfect as an entity um, on its own. For the Testaments, I give it four stars out of five. Um, I think there was a Again, I love the stories, but I think there was a bit of revisionism in the character of Aunt Lydia um, that I, I didn't fully buy into. So I marked it at a five, I'd give them both four out of five. But had I not read The Handmaid, had I not seen the TV programme, I probably would have all, I probably would have given The Handmaid Tale five, which is because I'd already read it. I didn't want to, it just didn't, I didn't have the sort of desire to read it as much as I would have done. <laughs> made for this session for to represent the handmaid's tales is called off glen's sorrow it is a mixture of gin elderflower and egg white the whole point is that it's a uh, bittersweet very much like the story of off glen <laughs> I don't like gin. Do you know what I think? A little bit of sugar would have just sweetened it. But I like the foaminess of it. I like yeah. the frothiness. I don't like gin, so I wasn't expecting to be a lover of it. So my cocktail is called the Janine. Um, so Janine in The Handmaid's Tale, for anyone that doesn't know, only has one eye. Um, and so my drink, inspired by her, is a shot of vodka, the juice of a whole lemon, and then it's to be shotted, and then immediately after chased with a sour Haribo Tang Fastic. And uh, the idea being that it's so sharp and it makes you go. Okay, so this is my cocktail, which I've called Commander Judd's Coffee. Um, and the inspiration was behind the fact that at Gilead, many things that we take for granted are luxuries, such as coffee. And so I've made this one with 
an espresso mix, vodka, and then a little bit of Baileys as well. Um, and it's a bit like espresso martini, but I'll put some Baileys in there to make it different. Um, and I've also got a quote to go with my uh, cocktail. Um, when Commander Juddie's having a, co a, a coffee with one of the ants, he says, it would be a sin to reject what God has provided to his favoured ones through his bounty. And I think that's a little motto we can take with us for life, for anything that we should enjoy. That's a bit of a luxury. Cheers. For um, clarity, I am not a fan of an espresso martini. Espresso. Uh, so. You're not a fan of many things, apart from your own cocktail. <laughs> yeah, which is shit. <laughs> we know where your boat's going. Cheers. Ooh. Oh, it's lovely. Sublime, it? <laughs> it's really nice. <laughs> Lovely. The Baileys in That's, this yeah. really offsets the, you know, that, that taste that lingers at the back yeah, of the Yeah, I agree. I don't really like the espresso martini just like that. I, I thought the Baileys would sweeten it a little. Mm. It, very, very well done, nice. very well done. You could have finished it off nicely with the little coffee bean. I know. Um, but I do like the frothiness. Shame on me. It's like, a, like an adult milkshake. It's lovely, I want another one. Hmm. Yeah, so who votes my cocktail to be the winner? Who votes Edward's cocktail to be the winner? <laughs> you <laughs> you can't vote for yourself. <laughs> That's why I didn't vote for me, otherwise. Who votes Katie's? I'm trying to remember there. Oh, so Katie's the Katie's winner. Katie's won. Congratulations. Thanks, guys.